The latest from the Zorn team, Zorn OS 17.1, running this off a live USB stick. You know, when I think of Zorn OS over the years since I've been playing with this, well, well, at least 10 years, I think of an old companion, an old friend, an old high school buddy, college buddy, someone you can have lunch with, someone you can have a beer with. Well, in my case, a glass of wine being Italian, <laughs> duh. But that's what Zorn OS feels like. It feels familiar, comfortable. It's never let me down. And it's something that if you are a Windows user, this should be on your top three list for Linux. It is on my top three list right up there with Chrome OS, Linux Mint, and Zorn OS. Now I am running this off a live USB stick. And if you are new to all this, you can create a live bootable stick, fairly inexpensive nowadays. And you can test this before you install to see if this is something that is for you. And as I'm playing with this really over the years, you know, nothing much has changed. And that's good. This is using what's called the GNOME desktop. It's not my favorite desktop environment for Linux. I think it's one of the worst for the default GNOME desktop. I stress that default, but this is not default. This is a modified version of the GNOME desktop. And it's super, super easy for beginners and really for anyone who has tried Linux before. Now, if you tried Linux before and it didn't work out for you, you should, you should try something like this. And if you tried Linux before, maybe, I don't know, maybe some gave you, someone gave you the wrong recommendation and you said, gee, Linux sucks. That would not be a fair statement. Now, if you tried Chrome OS, if you tried Linux Mint, and if you tried this and you still say Linux sucks, I find that hard to believe. Okay, I could accept that as a Windows user, but I don't think that's going to happen. Now, I do use multiple versions of Linux, as I stated right up there with along with Windows 11. I don't use Windows 11 that much anymore because it isn't necessary. That's how good some, and I stress how some, Linux distributions have become over the years. All right, so this is the core version. If you pay for the pro version, which is uh, $40, $50, quite reasonable, you get some other options, including some more layouts to change and customize your desktop. If you're not in, not into all that customization and stuff, then the core version, which is free, is perfectly fine. You can certainly, you know, customize it later if you want to, if you know what you're doing. But with Linux, with something like this, I think the way this is customized so far with the proper GNOME extensions for beginners, I think this is perfectly fine for beginners and beyond, as I like to say. So navigating through this is perfectly fine. I did have to install a simple screen recorder to record all this. I did notice that the default media player does not play <laughs> screen recording files. I had to install VLC. Uh, the snap version didn't work, but that's okay. I You don't need the snap version. Um, yeah, there are two versions of VLC. I'm not a big fan of snaps, apps, and flat packs, app pack, app images, and all that. But VLC, the, the, the point I'm getting at, VLC should be installed by default in all Linux systems. In fact, it should even be installed in Windows systems because it's never let me down. Now, running this off a live USB stick, I opened up the software center to explore. It's not working. I'm sure once I did a full install of this, I'm sure it would work perfectly fine. And I must say, running this off a live USB off a of ThinkPad, ThinkPads are great for Linux, by the way, I thought it ran fairly zippy. Yes, it will run. You will get better performance with the full install. And really nowadays, that is the best way to test a Linux system as a full install, not, not off a live USB or in a virtual machine. Those ways are perfectly fine if you are getting started, but to truly appreciate what a Linux system can do for you, you need to do a full, a full install, as I have done many, many, many times in the past over the course of, well, it's over 15 years now. So if I, had, if, if I was secluded on a desert island and I had to pick one or two Linux systems, this would be right up there because these are systems that I totally trust. I don't have to fix anything. It just works. Right after you install this, you run the updates and you should be good to go. The default colors, the fonts, 
the way this looks. I think it's fine out of the box. Of course, you can change the theming to all this if you want to. But this is a gateway, as Zoran likes to call it. This is a gateway for Linux, from Linux to Windows users, if you're so inclined to test something like this. And you should. In closing, let, let, me, let me just say this. There are hundreds and hundreds of different Linux-based systems to choose from. I get it. For Windows users, that is way too many. And really, out of those, I think the last count, 600 and climbing, there are only a handful that are truly right up there in quality. And this is and always has been one of the best because, as I said before, it's like a familiar friend you always want to be with for a can of beer or a bottle of wine. And Zorn OS has aged like a fine wine. Well, how's that for a closing statement? Check out the latest from the, from the Zorin team. I will have a link for this below in the show notes. Zorin OS, it looks and feels great. Check it out. I'll catch you on the next one. And now I will finish my glass of wine. Arrivederci. Ciao.